Uh, tonight, I'm here to give our uh, annual hurricane preparedness update, and in addition to this, uh, just a general uh, report to the council about initiatives and things that are taking place within the Department of Emergency Preparedness. I was prepared to give an abbreviated report tonight. Councilman Tosse requested that I make it a little more lefty and get, and get more into detail, so I'm uh, happy to do that this evening. Let me start off by discussing uh, our vulnerability. And it's, it's interesting, as I go around the parish, uh, I would say people would pick an argument, but it's really, it's really about questions. But a lot of people have a concern, or they're very concerned if we're really overstating our vulnerability here. And it's just kind of interesting because uh, whether we overstate it, understate it, uh, nonetheless, there are some scientific facts about the situation or the area in which we live. And we do have vulnerabilities here, whether we recognize them or not. Our parish is uh, a coastal community. We don't always recognize it that way, but it is a coastal community. In fact, we have over 330 miles of shoreline here in St. Charles Parish with our interior lakes, our lakes, um, our frontage along the Lake Pontchartrain area, and um, Lake Salvador and the Cotahuatchee, and into the Lafourche Basin. We are a parish of very low elevations, relative. I've really, it's interesting as I talk to different people around the community, and um, uh, you know they state that you know they live in high land or whatever else. Relative, all of our elevations are quite low, at least when it comes to storm preparedness. We're surrounded by major waterways and uh, hurricane protection. Um, to say that it's limited may be an understatement at this point because we've just got a report from the Corps. And uh, it is getting better, particularly along the East Bank. But as you just heard, we have major hurdles uh, to be crossed when it talks when we discuss West Bank hurricane protection. The reason for this, our long-term vulnerability, is this one slide where we discuss the virtual coastline of Louisiana. Below this brown area, you'll see this turquoise um, coastal area, which is the parishes of southeast Louisiana. What's important about this area is for everyone to understand that without the Mississippi River, without hundreds of years of the Mississippi River and thousands of years of the Mississippi River depositing sediment into the Gulf of Mexico, none of this area that we, in which we live would actually be settled, and that includes the city of New Orleans. So we are living in an area that would, without the Mississippi River, would be the Gulf of Mexico. And that has uh, a great deal of impact or effects uh, as to how we live and the situation in which we live in and our vulnerability, particularly to large hurricanes. The question I probably get most often since 2005 Prior to 2005, the question was, what is storm surge? Is it really that bad? And I think everybody has a understanding now of what storm surge actually is. But the question I get now is, what would have occurred if Hurricane Katrina made landfall further west? This is from the National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration's, what would they call their slosh model, Sea Lake Overland Surge from Hurricanes. It's a model that's been around for many years. It has a plus or minus 20% accuracy. Uh, since I've been here, since going back to 1990, uh, it has always fallen in there. And be honest, to, to be honest with you, uh, it is typically in uh, this area has under-predicted storm surge. So sometimes we look at these numbers saying that's got to be the most conservative value. However, when we have run the models against true uh, actual storms, in, in reality, it has under-predicted the storm, much because of subsidence. Subsidence is not really being calculated properly and also sea level rise. But in here, we can clearly see with a storm of the size of Hurricane Katrina, and by the way, not this is by, by far not the worst case scenario. We see storm surge heights on the east bank as high as 23 feet and as high as 20 feet on the west bank. And it's good to point out that both with our own hurricane protection levy project and with the CORUS project, in both cases here, uh, that hurricane protection is, protection is going to be overtopped. Uh, just recently, I was with, with a local newspaper, and we were discussing just that, is that no matter what, we're always going to have vulnerability here, no matter what we build. It's really a matter of disaster resiliency. How do we build? How do we develop? How do we go forward as a local government, state government, federal government, to be disaster resilient, to be able to bounce back from these potential threats and to live with the land and the threats that we have here in coastal Louisiana? I want to take a moment just to review, review the slosh model. And this is a similar model to, to what some of the council members in this administration, along with the parish president, uh, saw back uh, last month at the National Weather Service. We've been working with the slosh model for many years now. And what I have here is the actual computer, computer version of that. 
But I just wanted to show you, this is the storm I quite often mention. This is the, what I call the sleeper storm. It's only a category two, per se. Slow moving, category two storm, similar to one, except bring it up to a category two. And my concern is here, we're clearly seeing storm surge heights as high as 11 feet in our West Bank areas, meaning that just about 80% of the structures on the West Bank are gonna be inundated and affected. And this goes further, certainly everything south of 90, but there are a number of structures even north of 90 in this particular case uh, that will be inundated. The current level that we build it would offer some protection, though not complete protection at an elevation of just seven feet. Uh, my big concern here is that category one and category two hurricanes, and this being a category two, make up 80% of all storms that the United States receives. So in general, if we can build storm protection to cover category one and category two, we minimize uh, our potential impacts of these uh, more than 100 year type storm events. And I'm just gonna show, oh, we don't have an animation. I was gonna show an animation, but uh, I, didn't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe I loaded any. But anyway, we can see what those, uh, those different uh, events are. I'm gonna do one more here, which is just a slow moving category, uh, one hurricane. And even with that, we we'll bring this over here, you can see that we're talking about some storm surge heights up to uh, uh, six feet and would have some impact into the Willow Ridge, Mimosa Park, Lagatude of those particular areas here if and when we do not have hurricane protection. And I'm gonna zoom in here to uh, show you that this is the model taken in consideration that we would have uh, some type of uh, protection here from the Sunset Levee District. So it's not, sh it's not showing that this uh, storm surge is getting into Sunset. However, the model assumes that the Sunset Levee is eight feet all the way up to, to the Zalman's Bridge, which it's not, but the assumption is there. But even with that, we're seeing uh, this is where the Zalmas Bridge would be passing, or Highway 90 would be coming in here, and they're just showing some localized flooding behind or to the north side of the railroad tracks uh, in this particular area here. And I have some better photos, uh, better slides here with some other information. So that's our vulnerability in a nutshell. I want to move on to talking about uh, our just preparedness efforts and things that have changes, uh, uh, things that have changed. There is a change in evacuation planning for all of Southeast Louisiana, and that is that the state evacuation timeline has been adjusted. And now these are the 50, 40, and 30 hour prior uh, to tropical storm force winds. In the past, of were tropical storm force winds reaching Troop B, which is right there in Kenner. Now the change is that tropical storm force winds reaching the Louisiana coast. Uh, depending on the storm speed, this can add or this can actually push our timeline out, meaning that we'll be taking action some anywhere from some six uh, to, to as much as 18 hours uh, earlier than we had in the past. So sunny here from six to 18 hours, and that's really determined by the speed of the storm. Act 615 of the legislature last year requires now that our parishes have an evacuation plan for companion animals and pets, and we're gonna discuss that a little bit here. First off, St. Charles Parish does have an assisted evacuation plan, and I am very proud to tell you that the plan has been put in place with a lot of cooperation, not only with this parish and other parish departments, but in addition to our uh, other neighboring uh, partners uh, within the parish, such as the school board and the sheriff's office, that we have this assisted evacuation plan, council on agents, uh, uh, the fire department. A lot of different agencies have come uh, to task here to make this work out, a community services department, uh, recreation department. Again, it's just almost too many agencies to really discuss here tonight that have actually made this assisted evacuation plan possible. But the assisted evacuation plan is for those persons without transportation who do not have any special needs. And in addition to what we've done in the past, this special assisted evacuation plan is, is also in addition uh, not only to the residents but also their pets and companion animals. What we'll tell everybody is that everyone needs the plan to get out on their own. If they're not able to get out on their own, to work with their neighbors, family, friends, and social networks. But in the event that all of that fails, the parish does have a plan to assist residents who do not have transportation out into a safe area. 